Here we're looking at a hypothesis test of two independent population proportions. Basically, we're going to have a situation where we ask a question, like a yes or no question, or we look at a categorical observation or response. And in this one, we break it all the way down to just number of successes. We don't really know what that's describing, but we'll look at it as a proportion. So 624 out of 693. The thing is, in Staplet, we're going to enter it in as successes and failures, and it will do the rest of the work. So 624 successes out of 693 is going to leave um, a certain number of failures we subtract to find that. So 693 minus 624. Where I take that information is Staplet, one categorical variable, multiple groups. And I will enter in my two samples and my responses down the side. If I knew the variable name, I could put it there. If I knew the responses like yes versus no, I could put them here, but this one has no context. So there's my given number of successes for each group. I subtract from N to find the failures for each group. And I actually changed um, this to percentages on this problem. So I can look at my two groups here and they're pretty close to the same percent. If you really step back and look at it, kind of looking in close, I see it's about a 90% success rate versus a 93% success rate. And I should get those same number of um, sample size that N, so 693 and 720, that's a really good check when you go back here to make sure that you did subtract correctly. Now at the bottom, we can perform inference. We'll do a two sample Z test. I had a not equal sign for my alternative hypothesis. That makes it a two tail test. So that's gonna have a double the P value as if it were say a left tail test. So we're doubling the P value. It will mean that we reject the null hypothesis less often. Now my z-score is uh, negative 2.140. I've got my p-value here. If I need more precision on the p-value, I can go to a normal distribution. There I set the mean of zero and standard deviation of one to look at a z-curve. And I could enter in my z-score here. And since it is a two-tail, I will do the outside region with both the negative and the positive. And there I can get um, an area, or I can do just the left or right. Going back to my problem, I entered in my test statistic and p-value. I was comparing to an alpha of 0.05. My p-value is smaller, so this is a significant result. I've got sufficient evidence here. I'm rejecting the null hypothesis, so I'm rejecting that they're equal and saying that they look like they're not equal. And here, um, I at first thought maybe it was this first one, because that is sufficient evidence, but then it says the claim of not equal. We wouldn't want to reject the not equal we want to reject the null. So we could say there's sufficient evidence to reject a claim that they are equal, but that's not one of the choices. It makes the most sense to say this one, the sample data support the claim that they are not equal. So it's really a simple um, way to say it, but that's the best option for what we've got here. Now, if I had a larger p-value, say it was 0.06 instead, greater than alpha, I would fail to reject the null, and then I would have not sufficient evidence to support a claim that they're not equal. I would have not sufficient evidence to reject a claim that they're equal. There's also a couple ways that could be stated as well. Now this problem could be a little different if we move ahead and look at number three. In number three, the way this changes is we're given a percentage. Now actually, if we were to be doing this all with calculations, that might be helpful. 
but we're putting in precise observations into Staplet of the number of successes and the number of failures. This percentage is likely something that was rounded, and so it's not as precise as if we have the whole number of successes and whole number of failures. So what we would do on this problem is we'd go to a calculator. For example, I can go to this Desmos Scientific Calculator, and I will multiply my percentage as a decimal 0 0.189 times n, 0.189 times 488. This is not a whole number, but if we consider that the decimal percentage over here was probably rounded, then that means we won't get exactly a whole number over here. This is actually 92, and we can double check this. If we take 92, out of the 488, this is that proportion that we're really gonna be looking at, we get 0.1885, which rounds up to 0.189 if we have three decimal places. So I'm gonna have 92 successes and 488 minus 92, or 396 failures for my first group. And for my second group, 0.132 times 371. And 371 minus, in this case, I'll look at 49 successes, rounding that up, and 322 failures. Now I should see the same percentages that I started with if I round them to three decimal places. I can do that rounding down here. 18.9% and 13.2% like I see back here in the problem. So those are the two percentages that I'm comparing. Visually speaking, they maybe look a little bit farther ap apart than the last problem. And I will look at my Z test. And again, I have an equal not equal. So that is a two tailed test, not equal here. And I can look at my Z score and my P value In this case, that p-value is, again, less than my alpha, which means I would reject the null, and I would support a claim that they're not equal, again, in this case, just like that last problem.